Following the gold rush, by the 1850s, pioneer families began crossing the arid interior of North America, but traditional livestock suffered in the hot, dry conditions. In the mid-19th century, American military officers, diplomats, and academics proposed the introduction of camels for use as pack animals in the U.S. desert southwest. In response, Jefferson Davis, then Secretary of War, introduced legislation appropriating $30,000 for the purchase of camels. With congressional approval, the USS Supply made two voyages to North Africa and the Middle East in 1856 and 1857, returning with camels purchased in Algeria, Tunisia, Egypt, and Turkey, offloading them on the Texas Gulf Coast at the thriving port of Indianola. Once on American soil, the 75 camels were driven overland and headquartered in the Texas Hill Country at Camp Verde, near present-day Kerrville. Accompanying the camels were a handful of native camel drivers, among them Greeks, Turks, and Arabs, hired to tend the animals and teach the American soldiers the art of camel handling. Without hesitation, the camels were put to work hauling supplies between the Quartermaster Depot in San Antonio and their home of Camp Verde, a distance of over 50 miles. Camels became a regular sight on the Texas frontier, along with the more familiar horses, mules, donkeys, and oxen. But greater trials were needed. The Beale Expedition of 1857 departed from San Antonio with two dozen camels and orders to survey a wagon road from New Mexico to the Colorado River border of California. Along the way, and before leaving Texas, Beale stopped to resupply at Fort Ange, Fort Clark, Fort Lancaster, Fort Davis, and Fort Bliss. The section of road Beale cleared from Albuquerque to California would later be known as Historic Route 66. Beale was clearly impressed with the camels. The more I see of them, the more interested in them I become, and the more I am convinced of their usefulness. Their perfect docility and patience under difficulties renders them invaluable, and my only regret at present is that I have not double the number. Lieutenant Edward Beale, July 1857. In 1859 and 1860, the U.S. Army topographical engineers conducted two 90-day expeditions using camels to carry supplies into then-unknown West Texas, searching for more practical routes to the U.S.-Mexico border. Staging from the newly established Camp Stockton and exploring what is now Big Ben National Park, the Hearts and Eccles expeditions crossed a landscape so harsh and waterless they were eventually forced to abandon their mules. On July 2nd, 1860, Lieutenant William H. Eccles wrote in his journal, We camped dry without any prospects of finding water. We're all very uneasy, not to say a little frightened, for our welfare. Over the three-month journey, the camels had to survive multiple stretches of days without water, and though at one point the camels' feet had been abraded to the quick, to quote Eccles, the soldiers returned to Camp Stockton without the loss of a single camel. None other than Robert E. Lee, then in temporary command of the Department of Texas, remarked in a letter to Washington. The expedition was provided with a train of camels whose endurance, docility, and sagacity will not fail to attract the attention of the Secretary of War, and but for whose reliable services the reconnaissance would have failed. Despite the praise from those of high rank, the inevitable division of the Union would turn the government's attention away from the camels. Texas aligned itself with the South, and the Confederacy took over Camp Verde along with all its assets. During the Civil War, Camel caravans transported southern-grown cotton between San Antonio and Brownsville, Texas, one of the South's only ports not blockaded by the Union. After the war, Jefferson Davis was highly unpopular and virtually any project he'd been associated with was dismantled. The camels were sold at auction. Freighting operations used Beale's camels in California, Nevada, and Arizona and camels were put to work packing freight between Texas and Mexico. 
Camels even helped build the railroad out west. Ironically, it would be trains that would put an end to camel caravans crossing the American desert. But possibly no larger factor than the project's early supporter, Jefferson Davis, doomed the camels more. Perhaps a historical marker at Old Fort Stockton says it best. The camels were a practical success, but a political failure. <laughs>